This is the <clears throat> R12 to R134A retrofit kit made by Quest Parts. I found this kit for about 10 bucks at AutoZone. It has uh, a few fittings in there, and these are much higher quality than the Interdynamics R134A recharge kit, which is about 35 bucks at the local parts store. So I would definitely pick this up. These are much higher quality, less prone to leaking, more permanent solution. Here is the Mirage Turbo AC compressor and it's compatible with the 1.5 liter Mirage body and the 4G63 engine. So here you'll see the R12 fill fitting um, that, and then this is the low pressure side. This is where the low pressure hose bolts into in the back. Here's the high pressure side. Alright, here's the evaporator out of the car. Here's the area that sticks out in the engine bay. Top one is the high pressure, bottom one is low pressure. Here's the expansion valve inside the evaporator. There's going to be an O-ring here, O-ring in here, and then an O-ring right here on this fitting. I've blown the whole thing out with compressed air, try to get as much of the old oil out as possible. I'm going to lightly oil my new O-rings, put them in, tighten the fittings, but before I do that, uh, the service manual calls for some of the oil to be replaced. And from the factory, the compressor has five ounces of oil, and it says when you drain the system and replace some parts, you're going to need to refill them with oil. Now I found this oil on eBay. It's ester oil. It's for 134A systems and it's also most compatible with the R12 oil which is a different um, oil. And right here it says stable to residual chlorine from R12. So this is 8.5 ounces and it calls for 1.7 ounces to be replaced in the evaporator. It also says 0.34 ounces have to be replaced in the piping, 0.5 ounces in the condenser, and then 2.8 ounces back in the compressor. I bought a little dropper that reads out in milliliters. It only goes up to 2 milliliters. So converted into milliliters, the piping calls for 10 milliliters, which is this filled up five times. The evaporator calls for 50 milliliters, which is going to be a few more times. That's actually a lot of times this filled up. And basically I'm just going to squirt it in here and make sure it's somehow pushed back into the evaporator. The condenser then calls for 14 milliliters and the compressor needs 82 milliliters stuck back into it. So we'll cover that a little bit later, but make sure to coat your O-rings with oil and tighten everything up nice and then we'll get back into the car and replace this unit. Okay, I oiled the O-rings, tightened everything up, and I infused 50 milliliters of ester oil into the evaporator. So I'm going to install this back in the car and bolt in some of the lines in the engine bay. This is the high pressure retrofit valve that screws right onto the line. Make sure to clear your threads off with a wire brush and solvent as this has some thread locking adhesive that'll help seal. Um, that's basically it for this piece. It's got a nice cap on it with a rubber o-ring on the bottom that seals any residual leakage. Screw that on nice and tight. This is the low pressure valve on the compressor. You'll see the stock brass fitting on there with the Quest um, retrofit piece. What you want to do on this is you remove the valve stem from inside your old brass valve and then the new part screws right onto your threads. And you just want to do it hand tight otherwise you'll crush the o-ring and it won't seal. Um, but it does have some adhesive on there to lock the threads and it has its brand new valve inside of there and then also the, the black low side cap. 
these two hoses are um, the flexible hoses in the AC system. When you convert to R134A, it's recommended that you upgrade these hoses to a barrier style hose. Um, apparently the molecules in the R134A like to leak out of this rubber hose that was designed for R12. I'm going to just leave them as they are and see how the system works. Kind of going for the cost effective switch over. So this hose is the same between the 1.5 liter and the 1.6 liter. It says right on here, um, well it used to, there's a sticker on here that says compressor for the compressor side and the other side goes to the evaporator which is in the car. So the first hose, you'll want to find one of the O-rings that fit on the parts list. Um, this gets bolted into the low pressure side, also the fill side, and then it goes directly into the evaporator area. And then my evaporator is not in the car at the moment, but this would bolt into one side of the evaporator right there. And this other hose you see up here, it's a hard line that comes out of the evaporator. This is the high pressure line that also has an O-ring. So two O-rings at the evaporator here. And following this high pressure line, goes up stock location and then over to the dryer. I bolted the evaporator into the car and I bolted up these two lines with the O-rings. I also put about uh, four milliliters of oil into this hose and I bolted it up to the compressor with the O-ring. The fill fitting is 14 millimeters and I pulled that off I'm going to put the required 82 milliliters of oil into that hole and then I'll bolt up the other line. Inside this dryer is basically a pack of those little uh, crystal beads that absorb moisture and then also is the the pressure switch. If the pressure is too high it will shut the compressor off and if there's too low pressure it won't engage the compressor. So the dryer has two O-rings on each side. I uh, bought the dryer from the dealership and it didn't come with O-rings so those you have to order separately. And coming out of the dryer is another hard line which if you follow goes this way and then down into the bottom of the condenser. Need another O-ring down there. And uh, you want to make sure your, your condenser is free of any debris, leaves, dirt. And it's a good idea to keep that clean so you can get the maximum airflow. The last line that goes into the condenser is the other flexible hose. Again, it's recommended that you replace this, get this hose rebuilt. And usually, I would imagine that hydraulic shops can do it or anyone else that specializes in hoses. It's just a special compression fitting and then a rubber hose. And this hose comes down and goes into the top of the condenser. Again, find the O-ring that fits on here. Make sure to put a little bit of oil on the O-ring. We'll cover that a little bit later in the oil section. And then this line actually is going to go underneath the other line and then bolt into the compressor along with another O-ring. So that completes the actual physical part of the AC system. This is the AC gauge kit that I bought from Harbor Freight. It's about 45 bucks and well worth it. In my opinion this is the only way to go if you're going to service your own AC system. And then I also purchased the the siphon pump. Also, about it was only ten bucks. Basically, you hook up your compressor to this side, and then you hook up this yellow hose from the top port onto this fitting on the end. Turn on your compressor, and it'll draw a vacuum. But before you do that, you connect the blue to your low side on the compressor. 
and it's got a quick fitting on it so it's real convenient. Once this valve is on your compressor, the quick connect, you screw in clockwise this top valve and then it'll show you a reading up here. And if your system is empty, it's going to show zero on the black scale. So once that's done, you hook up the suction pump, your compressor, and then you turn this valve to on counterclockwise, and then you'll see it start to draw a vacuum. With my compressor, I was almost able to reach 30 um, inches of mercury, and after that point, you shut this valve off clockwise, and that'll hold the reading and it'll hold everything in the line. You shut off your compressor, and at that point, it should hold solid. Because if it doesn't, it means you got a leak somewhere in your system. You do that a few times. Um, generally, it's recommended that you pull a vacuum for quite a while. Um, I wasn't able to do that with my compressor. It kept losing pressure, and I had to recharge it and um, let it wind down and recharge it again. But if you have a vacuum pump, those run about 100 bucks, 150 bucks for a decent one. Those are specially designed for this system and that might be a little bit easier but I found my cheap uh, compressor and vacuum valve working pretty well. Once you use this to pull a vacuum you should safely be able to remove the fitting that's on the compressor. Uh, all you have to do is unscrew the top part of the valve counterclockwise and then pop the quick connect off and then you'll, your system will have the vacuum that was listed up on here and if you hear hissing, which you shouldn't, um, the only possibility would be the valve, the retrofit kit on the compressor. Uh, otherwise, you you have a vacuum in there and you're good to fill up. So at that point, what I did, uh, the factory specified amount of refrigerant is... Here it shows the refrigerant quantity of R12 to be 36 ounces. When you do the 134A conversion, you want approximately 80 to 85 percent of this amount in your system. So that would be somewhere 25 to 28 ounces of 134A. The method I use to fill the system is with these 12 ounce cans of 134A. Um, Basically, you can pick them up at AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts, any parts store. You should be able to get these for about six to eight dollars. I also got one of these nifty trigger fill hoses with the 134A low pressure fitting on the end. Um, this gauge isn't all that accurate. I found uh, on my car, um, it's it's okay, but that was designed for 134A system. But we'll go more into this a little bit more detail a little bit later. Um, but obviously, two cans is 24 ounces. Um, your system might blow pretty cold with that amount in there. Uh, however, you'll probably end up with a third can, uh, adding maybe a quarter, a little bit more, just to top it off. So, figure three cans of this at six to eight bucks is 18 to 24 dollars for 134A, and then whatever hose kit you want to set up. Uh, it's a real tight fit with this can and hose to the compressor so you might be better off trying to find a hose um, they sell one with like a T-valve up here and then possibly a hose that will connect into that uh, AC gauge kit manifold but this one worked alright for me performance temperature chart in the factory manual again this is for R12 refrigerant so I'm not sure how differently it is for 134A uh, but basically it shows uh, ambient temperature, the discharge temperature, compressor discharge, which is the high side, and the evaporator suction, which is the low side. And going by these gauges, I, I put in about 20, I'd say about 24 to 26 ounces of 134A in the system. Um, again, that's with uh, oil in the system also, I'm not sure actually it, this doesn't include oil but uh, again 36 ounces of R12 was the specification 
I think I got about six to eight ounces of oil also in various locations. Um, but idling with the AC on, this gauge I was at about 200 PSI and that's with about 75 degrees outside and then that was also 47, 48 degree air vent discharge temps. Uh, this gauge is a little bit higher. You can see actually it was about uh, 35, 40 PSI. Um, so that's a little bit higher than the specified uh, 18 to 23 PSI suction pressure. Um, 152 to 220 discharge that was right in right in the range of what I had and then obviously discharge air temperature I wasn't quite at 35 degrees but um, you know with the conversion I'll take 47 48 degrees no problem so we'll do a little recap of the whole um, conversion this is a 1.5 liter compressor not compatible with 1.6 or 2 liter engines because uh, this has a v-belt that's bad. Uh, here's the clutch wire. If you tap this to 12 volts and ground the compressor, this will basically stop and the clutch will engage. You hear a click. Here's the fill port. I already removed the valve, but again, you buy uh, the Quest valve from AutoZone or Advance Auto or eBay. Um, you'll thread it into the stock valve and thread it back in there. I think there's actually an O-ring here too, but the stock one was fine here you'll see the refrigerant temperature sensor it's got two wires <clears throat> and there's a specification in the manual for ohmage that this should or resistance that you should have for this sensor but I picked up a used compressor it's working fine here are the two refrigerant lines actually you'll see right on here it says SUC for suction DIS for discharge uh, obviously new o-ring goes there, new one goes there, and your lines bolt in. On the bottom here you'll see three Allen plugs. I pulled these all out and drained a decent amount of old R12 oil out of the compressor. You can also stick a blow gun in here, attach your compressor and blow it out and you'll get any residual vapor out of the compressor. But I drained this these got uh, an o-ring or um, a copper crush ring on under each of these I would clean that out the best you can get all the oil out of this old thing before you put in the new oil okay this is the factory manual which is widely available on the internet for the Mirage I had a little s tricky situation where my car is a 1.5 liter originally um, I have a 2 liter engine in it now and a 1.6 liter air conditioner compressor and a few other air conditioner pieces so for the most part uh, I got to work it should work no problem either way because these are very similar but uh, right here you'll see the ignition switch which obviously gives power to certain things the blower switch which is the um, econo and AC and off switch uh, this uh, square here is the auto compressor control unit which is a black box mounted on top of the evaporator and that's behind the glove box. These two sensors, air thermo and air inlet sensors, are ambient temperature sensors. They're mounted inside the evaporator. One you'll see uh, has a blue shielding on the wire and the other one is kind of tucked in the evaporator a little bit better. Uh, these are both on a single connector that plug into that control box. There's also another connector which houses all of these wires and connections. The refrigerant temperature sensor right here that senses the temperature of the actual refrigerant in the compressor. That's where the sensor is located. Uh, three wires coming out of the compressor. One is the clutch and then these two are for the temperature sensor. Uh, just to ground here and then this is the main uh, kind of control wire I like to call it. One of this one of, one of this branches off here, one of this wire branches off to the condenser fan motor relay. Um, you'll see the difference here between 1.5 1.6 liter. Um, this is what's telling the condenser fan or the secondary fan to turn on. So if you don't have the AC actually installed, you can still wire that secondary fan 
so when you turn on AC that second fan will come on and that's how I had it set up before this this dual pressure switch here this is mounted on the dryer unit and if you buy a new dryer which you have to um, it comes on there at least from Mitsubishi it did I got mine for about a hundred bucks uh, that's definitely the way to go I tried going through AutoZone, Napa and a few others and I, they kept ordering the wrong dryer it had the wrong fittings on it and didn't even come with the pressure switch so a hundred bucks with the discount it's not bad and you know it's gonna work uh, this basically detects uh, refrigerant pressure if it's too low it's gonna shut everything off and then if it's too high it's also gonna shut everything off but if it's in between it'll say okay and then it'll keep going down here alright again you see that it's branched off between turbocharged and NA. On uh, the 1.5 liter Mirage, there's a, a jumper connector for some reason up by the AC fuse box in the, behind the passenger headlight. This likes to corrode really bad, and if it does, your system's not going to function well. So I, it, mine was corroded. I cut it, resoldered it. Um, obviously, on the turbocharged version, it doesn't look like there is a jumper connector here. Um, but also you'll see that there's an engine coolant temperature sensor on the 1.6 liter that's found on top of the um, coolant neck coming off of the head my sensors broke I just twisted the wires together it's no big deal it basically just shuts off the AC if the coolant temperature gets above 100, 230 something degrees um, which that shouldn't happen otherwise that would be bad 1.5 liter doesn't even have it because it doesn't get that hot and then here in the ECU goes into pin 25 um, basically after all these conditions are met it says to the ECU okay we need to turn on the air conditioning over here on pin 15 coming out of the ECU black white wire this goes directly to the air conditioner compressor relay which you'll see is also triggered by this wire um, which gives it power so the ECU is going to say okay give it power um, turn this relay on and then that relay will switch on and the magnetic clutch will click on and then your AC system will be functional a good way to test uh, certain oh, you can get into it in the factory manual but you can always um, before you install one of these compressors to make sure the clutch is good you just jump 12 volts to the single uh, wire going to the clutch and you should hear a click. If you hear a click, it's good. So that's an overview of the AC uh, electronic system. Condenser, you can't see, but it was my stock 1.5 liter condenser. It's behind the radiator, actually in front of it. <clears throat> Here's the high pressure line. There's an O-ring here you'll see the other line on the bottom there's also an o-ring there here's our retrofit fitting on the high line you follow the high line it goes directly into the compressor the discharge out of the other side of the compressor is the suction line and that goes behind uh, the fire the intake manifold firewall and that goes into the evaporator two o-rings down there Coming out of the evaporator is another line that goes into the dryer. Again, here's my brand new dryer from Mitsubishi, 100 bucks. Comes with a new dual pressure valve. You also have to buy an O-ring here, O-ring here, and then you follow the dryer line back, and then it goes into the other side of the condenser. So that's the AC system. Um, as far as the oil. After you take apart all the lines, the compressor, you can take out the condenser. They actually have a AC system flush, and it's this liquid that you don't pour in the compressor, but you pour it in the evaporator and uh, the condenser, and that's supposed to remove any. Um, uh, that's a Coast Guard helicopter. Uh, benefits of living on near the lake. Lake Michigan. Alright, uh, so you know, you can pull everything out and flush the system with that uh, 
the cleaner that might remove some more R12 oil that might not be a bad idea but once you blow out all the lines um, you know you could stick a blowgun in the evaporator like I did you can stick a blowgun in the condenser like I did just blow it out you'll have some oil vapor coming out um, also same with the evaporator there's three o-rings on the expansion valve which is in the evaporator um, I listed those part numbers earlier again make sure to clear out the evaporator best you can blow it out you might find some leaves and stuff in, the, in there um, again stick a blowgun in the lines and um, blow it out you'll get some oil vapor coming out of there but here is the oil that I was talking about um, you can read this little blurb if you want but you want to pick up some ester oil um, there's also PAG oil and some other oils and different viscosities but I picked up standard uh, ester oil which is compatible with residual R12 mineral oil um, basically after you clean out all the lines and everything you have to re-add this ester oil to these various components um, like I said before compressor takes 85 cc's or 5.2 cubic inches um, I, I had that little dropper that's measured out in milliliters so you can convert if you want um, basically just take some drops and squirt them in there until you um, get to that uh, amount and then condenser 15 cc 0.9 cubic inches which isn't too much piping 0.6 cubic inches not too much at all and then evaporator which is 3.1 cubic inches decent amount in there it's hard to squirt it in not get it to spill out when you install it again um, but uh, system's been running fine it's not leaking with all the new o-rings and everything uh, 47 degree discharge air out of the vents um, we'll see how it uh, does on a hotter humid more humid day but uh, no overheating got a front mount the AC and then the stock 1.5 liter radiator car is a 90 Mirage all-wheel drive got a GT 35R running 38 pounds of boost AEM or 38 pounds um, 28 pounds of boost got an AEM engine management system um, AC works flawlessly with the AEM you can set a few settings on it as far as when you want it to turn off below a certain RPM and um, what percent you want the idle increased and a whole bunch of cool stuff but uh, the system seemed to work fine I got cold air out of an old R12 system on a Mitsubishi Mirage and I uh, hope this tutorial was very helpful and if there's anything else I can help you out with check the forums or shoot me an email at jason at lilevo.com that's l-i-l-e-v-o dot com thanks and enjoy your cool air